get started. <clears throat> awesome. All right, thank you guys. Another fantastic Thursday evening with the Florida Rum Society for one of our virtual happy hours um, on a really crazy for Florida, like cool evening. Some people are doing it outside, which is nice, which is something we can't always do, but, um, but happy to have everyone here and really thrilled to have uh, Eduardo Bacardi from uh, Barlito, who's gonna share with us some fantastic rums and some fantastic rum stories. As always, casual, use the chat if you wanna get a question to them or just jump in either way. But um, I wanna thank right here at the top, uh, Eddie and Steve, Eddie Maddox and Steve Miller, who made the connection with uh, Eduardo to, uh, to help set this up. So thank you gentlemen for traveling the same parts, drinking a lot of rum and then deciding to uh, connect Eduardo with us after all that happened. Um, perfect, so Eduardo, if you're ready, I'm going to throw it over to you, my friend. Absolutely, thanks Jay and thanks to everyone. We're really excited to be here. I say we, cause I am joined by uh, our, one of our brand specialists, Edgardo Sanchez, and our master blender, Luis Planas, was also able to make it. So he is ready for all of your questions, as technical and as simple as you want to make them. He is the one guy you, you're going to want to talk to. So I'm really excited to be here. Like I mentioned, um, Ronel Barrilito is a brand that we've been working on, starting to get the know, know about uh, growing in the past few years. Uh, it's a brand that, as old as it is, is definitely still has that mystique factor, that uh, that cultural, I guess, uh, appreciation that people know about it, but they know nothing about it. And so we're excited to tell the actual story as it is, all 140 years worth of it. And I know that many of you do have samples in front of you, so getting to try it uh, virtually here, accompanied by some of our best uh, best people, is something that we're really excited to do. So what we want to do is... We'll go through a little bit of the history of the brand, uh, our process, what makes our products unique, and then we'll go into the actual products and the tasting. At any point, feel free to stop me, ask questions. It can be questions towards myself, towards our brand specialist, towards our master blender. Uh, we will jump in and answer them. Our case, we like to make it very interactive. So we like questions, we like feedback, we like people you know, giving their opinion. Uh, we can go from there. So, Jay, if we're ready to go, you let me know. It's all you. I think we're ready to go. We're excited that uh, you joined and all you brought a whole bunch of friends. And it's uh, it's eight o'clock down there in uh, Puerto Rico. So we're happy that they hung on to uh, to hang out with us. That's happy hour down here for us. So we're just getting Perfect. started. Don't worry about us. Perfect. Cool. Perfect. So without further ado, can you guys see my screen here? Yes, confirmed. Perfect. We will get started. So again, thank you everyone for joining. Uh, we'll be talking about Ron del Barrilito this evening, which is Puerto Rico's oldest rum uh, and one that you may or may not have heard of. Uh, like I mentioned, we're really starting to expand our U.S. distribution in terms of getting our product out there, even though we've been around for so long. So we'll get started talking about a little bit of the history of this brand, which dates back quite a few years to the 1700s, when in 1787, the Spanish crown bestowed upon the Fernandez family the Hacienda Santa Ana, which is located in Bayamón, Puerto Rico. It is actually the premises we are sitting on this very day. The house you see in the bottom left corner is about 300 feet to my left. It is where one of the Fernandez family members, third generation, continues to live, and he's probably there right now having his sip of three stars as he does every single night. So this is a really unique place. It's one that really has been preserved in time and that we've enjoyed and continue to enjoy as we work here today. So the Hacienda Santa Ana dates back to the 1700s when it was one of the largest estates on the island which focused on sugarcane production. Um, it spanned from, for those friends of us who may have visited Puerto Rico already, it spans from where we are now around San Juan Bayamón all the way to Manatí. So that probably covers around maybe eight to 10 municipalities of Puerto Rico, which is a total of 82. So it was one of the largest haciendas on the island. Um, and as we know, it focused on sugarcane. And like many sugarcane haciendas, 
over time, they started to tinker with rum. So by 1880, officially Ron del Barrilito came to be known, which makes it the oldest rum from Puerto Rico. So Puerto Rico, rum capital of the world, people might not know this, but the oldest still existing rum today is Ron del Barrilito. And like I mentioned, it is still produced here at the Hacienda Santa Ana. So we go a little bit more forward and we get into 1871, where Pedro Fernandez, he finishes his chemical engineering studies in Paris, France, where he studied with a class of pretty interesting people over there, um, including uh, the engineer Eiffel, who helped design the Eiffel Tower, namesake, of course, uh, Cartier, who helped to found the Cartier uh, Jewelry Company, some of the original founders of the Egro Pot Still. So he was pretty reputable in his class. We have some of the class photographs here at the Visitor Center. It's pretty interesting to look at it and pick out some of these people who went on to do very amazing things. And we have Pedro Fernandez, who was from Puerto Rico, goes over there to study and returns to the Hacienda Santa Ana with a lot of techniques that were uncommon to the island at the time. So over there, he learned to work with a lot of brandies and cognacs, and he started mixing that with his knowledge of rum producing, which his family had been doing for many decades at the time. So when he starts tinkering them together, he starts making different rum blends. But of course, over time, his best rum blends, he would keep in very small barrels and he would keep them hidden in the back of his house. So as people started to become familiar with all of his different blends, they would very wisely and astutely asked, no, I don't want the rum that you serve to everyone. I want the rum that you store in the little barrel, which when translated to Spanish is rum del barrilito, rum from the small barrel. Mm -hmm. So that blend in particular is what became known in 1880 as rum del barrilito. And the same secret formula and aging process, which creates the very smooth and mellow premium rum that we all know, is what has become loved over so many years. And again, we'll get into all the details of our process, but it's one that we've kept intact since that date as close to the original formula as possible. And you can imagine that a lot of time has passed since then. So there's a lot of painstaking uh, steps in our process that we really, really safeguard in terms of making everything as it once was. So over the next century, the Fernandez family continued to produce these rums. So Edmundo Fernandez, who was the son of Pedro, started to commercialize it a little bit more here in Puerto Rico and started selling it a little bit more in terms of the three stars, which was their original product. So every batch that they would produce would go out the door. Everything that they were producing was here on the Hacienda Santa Ana, which like I mentioned, they lived on the property. Their aging warehouses are equally as distant to me as the original estate that you saw to my right. And everything was really done here in what was their home. So when people say that, you know, their, their work is their, their home and they work in their backyard. These guys weren't joking around. The Fernandez family has always been on the Hacienda Santa Ana and been tied to it in every sense of the word. Um, like I mentioned, everything continues to be aged, blended, and bottled here at the Hacienda. So now we are four generations later, and the Fernandez family continues to remain very dedicated to this brand. So if you meet some of these people, if you get the chance to come down here, you can meet some, uh, like I mentioned, the gentleman who lives still lives here in the, in, the, in the estate here. He is, I believe he's 87 years old. He just turned 87 a few weeks ago. He lives here and they are some of the most passionate, proud and humble people that you will ever know that have dedicated their entire life and their, few, their past generations to creating rum. He's a third generation member. Uh, the fourth generation is still working with us to this day. And they really just have a passion for this brand and rum in general. So again, over the past 140 years, very little has changed. This photo I like to show because it's so one of the earliest uh, labels that we have been able to find. Obviously, it's not that early, but you know, it just goes to show that this brand has a, 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 um, around all the changes that, ha that has happened over the past century and a half, this brand has really been preserved in time. So it's something that we really cherish and like to enjoy. So now let's talk about the products. So Edmundo B. Fernandez, which is the name of the company, we produce traditional premium aged rum. And right now we produce it under two different trademarks, Ron del Barrilito, which you're familiar with and which is what we'll be tasting today, and our newer launch, Ron Hacienda Santa Ana, which we'll speak about later as well. 
So both of these trademarks are produced here at the Hacienda Santa Ana and have some unique defining features, which we will go through as well. But for today, we will be focusing on the Barrito products, which range from two stars, three stars, four stars, and five stars. The only difference between these products is not the way in which we age them, the types of barrels. The only difference is aging. So the blends of the ages that we have from these products, that is the only unique defining factor, which when we go through the tasting, I always like to describe, you're basically tasting an evolution of the same base over time, interacting with these barrels, interacting with time, interacting with everything around it, and obviously being blended by our very special guest that we have here, Luis Planas, our master blender, who will be able to get into all the details that he can, uh, he can share about that. So these products are known for their very unique aging process, the lack of any artificial ingredients or additives or sugars, the very unique flavor profiles that are created from our process and how consistent it has been over time. So the formula has been passed down from generation to generation in the Fernandez family, and we continue to preserve it in that same way. Even though there are steps in our process, which had many months uh, of labor and of uh, different steps and processes to the overall product, but it is again, sacrifices that we are willing to make to continue producing this rum in its original artisanal way. So our products go from as young as three to five years in our two stars and as old as up to 35 years in our five stars, which we will get into when we actually get into the tasting. But before that, and before we actually start tasting these products, and I know I'm teasing you all because you probably have it ready to go. I want to talk a little bit so you further and best understand what our products are known for, what you're tasting when you put that liquid to your lips and what makes it so special. So first and foremost, I'm just gonna go through these quickly. It is, as I've mentioned, Puerto Rico's oldest rum brand since 1880. This is a feat, while it doesn't add anything to the flavor, it definitely adds something that we are proud to share, we are proud to boast. It is something that, again, makes us unique in that sense and shows our testament to time. Something that's been around for 140 years, like I always say, you must be doing something right. There's no way that they're, do, they're putting out a bad product if you've been around for that long. So we've made, been made in the same place, in the same family manner for over a century. Nothing has changed about it. A lot of, like I said, time has changed, uh, processes have changed and have uh, evolutionized. We have stayed exactly the same. And some of these processes are, again, are very intricate in the way that we do it, including our maceration process, which we handcraft in very small batches uh, using this maceration process, which is to summarize, and I'm sure we're gonna get into this process in our Q&A, um, and it's good that we have Luis here because he can go into it in way better detail than I can. But what it is to summarize, and I'll give it to you quickly, is we have around two dozen different maceration tanks. A maceration tank being a wooden tank where we contain a high alcohol proof rum base mixed with a natural fruit or natural spice, which we source, uh, again, all natural. There's no preservatives here. There's no concentrates. There's nothing that at the time in 1880, they weren't doing again. So we've been able to source these different ingredients. Now that macerate macerates for several months at a time, creating a very unique flavor profile with this rum base. Each of these rum bases are different. So again, I don't know all the all of the different macerates, probably by design. Obviously, Luis and the master blend and the blending team does because that's their job. And these macerates might be, for example, one might be apricots, one might be plums, one might be oranges. And that macerate, again, goes blending over several months. Now, these macerates are used in certain proportions, which is the family formula, which the Fernandez family created back in 1880. And in unique proportions, they are added to the total base, which once blended and once married, goes in for aging. Again, I'm teasing you with this because I'm giving you like the tip of the iceberg. We have Luis here who's going to be able to answer all your questions, but I don't want to keep you guys from tasting the rum anymore. So we'll get back to this process soon because I'm sure some of you have questions. It's an amazingly intricate process, which maybe you guys have seen in the past. Personally, I haven't. And from many people I've spoken to, have, they haven't seen this process done uh, with rums. It does not make us a spice rum in any way by our standards, by TTB standards, because the amounts we use are so minuscule. They're less than 1% of the total, uh, the total liquid that we, go to, we put to age. So again, it's a very all natural, 
process that adds many months and many different elements to our products. So all of our rums are aged 100% in white oak barrels that previously held Oloroso sherry. So this is not a sherry finish. This is not a sherry, you know, half and half that we do uh, ex bourbon and go to ex. Everything since 1880 has come over ex sherry barrels that we use. Obviously, this adds another element of complexity to our product. These are, instead of the standard 50 gallon size barrels, they're a little bit larger than twice the size. So they're around 132 gallons or 500 liters. These are much bigger barrels. It changes the surface area proportions. It changes the, it changes the, the area of contact again, which adds another layer of complexity to the blending once it comes down to it. Very interesting process and one that hopefully you'll be able to taste, especially as we go into our older expressions. All of the water that we use here is sustainable filtered rainwater. So in Bayamón, there's a saying in Puerto Rico, que en Bayamón llueve todos los días, which means in Bayamón it rains every day. And having worked here for the last two and a half years, I can 100% tell you that it is true. And while people see it as rain is bad, we see it as rain is good. Rain means that we get to collect water. We have very large underground tanks, which were built many decades ago, which we collect the water um, and we use that to proof down our rums prior to aging. So nothing is added post-aging. There are no sugars, no caramel coloring, no artificial ingredients. Again, back in 1880, none of these things existed. So the fact that we are maintaining this process the same as it was back then goes to show that we are very committed to doing that. Obviously, we all know products that do these things, um, that add sugars, that add coloring, that color correct and add these elements. We do not. We, the way we color correct is by taking an older, darker rum and adding it to the blend and making sure that it comes out the way we want it to. Again, not efficient. Uh, in many eyes, almost like uh, people say, why are you using a 17 year old rum in a six to 10 year old rum blend? Well, we gotta get the color corrected and we need maybe more flavor profile of this or, or less of this. Again, it's part of the very intricate aging and blending process that we have. So again, to that point, each batch that we make is blended to match the taste and aroma and depth of the original formula, which we do through our blending process, which happens after aging. Every bottle that we have is hand labeled and packed by our team. So we do it all ourselves here on the premises, right in the middle of our aging warehouse. We have our very, uh, I say beautiful in quotations, a uh, bottling line, which is uh, probably four times as old as I am, but it works, it gets the job done. We're not exporting millions and millions of cases. So everyone is involved in this process. I'm involved in this process. Our brand specialists are involved in this process. We don't shy away from using every hand we get because we are a very small company. We do this very much by hand and it is something that we take a lot of pride in doing. So all of our products are at 86 proof. It's the way it's been since the beginning. So the Fernandez family didn't settle for 80, probably due to some of their European uh, spirits influences, they settled at 86 proof. And as I mentioned, it is our rums are proofed down prior to aging. So they are aged uh, in anywhere between 90 and 100 proof uh, when they go into the barrel and then blend it to come down to 86 proof. And then finally, on the trade side, some of you might agree with this, but Barrilito has a very cult following amongst mixologists and rum drinkers. It's a product that has been in the market for longer than we all know. It has come, it has gone. People know about it. People tell rumors about it, myths about it. I've heard some crazy stories, which are wild when you actually learn the truth about the brand. But again, that's what's really had the mystique about this brand and what's made people want to learn more about it. That's why I'm here. I'm teaching people about it. That's why we're all here. That's why our visitor center exists. And it's something that we're really happy to be doing because we're telling the story, the amazing story that is actually how it is produced and how it has come about. And then our demand outpaces our supply. So we're trying distributed by allocation. Obviously in the past few years, we've been trying to ramp up our production to make sure that the people wanting to find Barrilito can find it more easily. In the past year, stories of people who got it steadily for two years and then it disappeared from the market for eight years and then they cursed me out because they say, why would you do that? I love this brand. I had it for so long and then it, you, you killed me because you took it away. It's almost like, a, you know, like a, I'll say the same thing. our role here is to make sure that we bring it to the market and we bring it in a way that it is constantly available to those who are looking for it. We're not going to be everywhere, but we're going to be in the right places. 
And that's our mission in these past few years and what our production team has definitely strived to do uh, over the past few years. So without further ado, we can Eduardo, now- Eduardo, there, there was a comment real quick. There was a comment real quick that said, um, Puerto Rico first, but then Florida and then everywhere else. That's how you should supply it now. Like <laughs> That is exactly how we plan on doing it. So Florida is uh, Florida is one of our markets where we, we have priority. You know, you're the closest to us in the States. You know, we have that. Uh, you guys, if you look at a map, you're kind of reaching down towards Puerto Rico. So we see that like you extending a hand to us. So we'll make sure to get there. <laughs> Perfect. Do we have any questions before we jump into the tasting? Um, I don't know. I haven't been reading the chat, but if you have, Jay, and you want to me some of these questions there was a day. lot of uh there was a lot of i like that when talking <laughs> about not adding anything someone did mention that santa santa Ana is 69 abv so that that's right. that the wallop right but yes. um, the, the, the bottling it takes a village i think we're good perfect then without further ado we'll jump into our tasting we have mm -hmm. here which hopefully works it's short if it doesn't we'll get through it fast we're all adapting okay. to Times. So um, I'm going to show you this little video and then I'm going to hand it off to Edgardo Sanchez, our brand specialist, who will walk you through the best part of this presentation. I know you're tired of hearing my boring voice and we'll get to actually tasting some incredible rums. So again, without further ado, I introduce you to... Because Rosie, Rosie can come down. Rosie can drink rum, that's for sure. I like that tray. All right. So that was a little video we prepared uh, around two years ago with some of you might be familiar with the crews of La Factoria and Jungle Bird down here. That was when we were starting our four stars. We gave them a little bit of a tasting, a preview. They put us in an attic. It almost felt like a speakeasy type vibe in Puerto Rico. We got Luis to come out and explain it to them again. He doesn't come out for many of these things. So that, this is the second time he comes out. That was the first time. So again, feel honored that he's here. Uh, he's a really special person. I'm, I'm glad you guys will be able to, to converse with him later. But again, let's jump into our products, the tasting, the fun part. So here is Edgarla, who will start with are from the Barrilito Two Stars. Oh, hello, everybody. I'll be, I'm Edgar, I'll be with you guys during this experience. I'm excited. I'm probably as excited as you guys are to be here in front of the Florida Rum Society. That's, that's well, something I've you, been looking if, forward if, for a long you time. Saw, you, you saw everyone posting their pictures when they got their samples. I had to, uh, I had to, to lock some people up so they wouldn't try it early. <laughs> I can it, imagine the temptation was just staring right there. Um, so yeah, I, I'm excited to get started and let's give this a look. Um, we have a wonderful brand here. I'm very proud to be part of this team. Um, each one of our rums is full of history. Some are a little bit more recent. Uh, some, like Eduardo says, is a, this is uh, Puerto Rico's oldest rum brand. And that's something to be very excited about. Those of you who have been to Puerto Rico, or those of you who have not been, I give you a little challenge next time you come here or, or if you come here for the first time, sit down at the bar. If you see the bottle of Ronda Barrilito, which you'll see in nine out of 10 bars of Puerto Rico, ask the bartender about it. I guarantee to you, his face will light up like a Christmas tree in happiness. They love talking about the brand. It's just that good. It has that, that reputation. It's a generational brand as well. Ask any Puerto Rican about Ronda Barrilito. And they'll, they'll tell you with a smile, oh, yes, that's my favorite rum, or that's the rum that my grandfather used to drink, my uncle drinks, my father drinks. 
it's somewhere connected uh, to the family. And if you look at your rums, those of you who have the opportunity to join us in, in, in the tasting, uh, and you have your box with your rums, we're gonna get started with Ronda del Barrelito, Dos Estrellas, the two-star rum. Now, funnily enough, um, two-star rum is in fact the second rum that we made, but it does not come after one-star rum. It actually comes after Ronda del Barrelito, Tres Estrellas, three-star rum. Ronda del Barrelito is a little bit, I like to say, like the Star Wars movies where it starts in the middle, goes back, then goes forward. It's a little bit like that. So I'm gonna guide you through a little journey through time there too. But Ronda del Barrelito, is a rum that it came a little bit after the prohibition, which was, uh, as you all know, a, a very transformative time, not just for, for us uh, as a rum brand, but for the entire spirits industry. And it was the, the resurgence of, of the brand coming back and saying, hey, we're still here. We, we didn't disappear during those years. We're still here, we're standing proud and we're moving forward. And it was a rum that was made in a different market, because after those years of the prohibition, as many of you may know, the prohibition is also known as the golden age of cocktails. Uh, a lot of new cocktails came about the, during that time. So the palate had changed quite a bit. It was not only sipping rum, a lot of people were looking what to do with that rum. And Grande Barrelito Two Stars came out a little bit with an answer for that, with a very versatile rum that you can enjoy uh, neat, as many people used to do before the prohibition years and that you could also enjoy in many cocktails. I will invite you to look at it for a moment. Those of you who have it, smell it. Uh, if you wanna go through a little journey and smell each of your rums, one after the other, uh, go ahead and do that because you're gonna find a very interesting profile to each one of them. And Ronda Barilito Two Stars is no exception to that. As the youngest rum, Naturally, you're gonna perceive a little bit of that alcohol aroma, that ethanol aroma, a little bit more pronounced perhaps, but you will find that even that, even with that, it's still an incredibly smooth rum for a rum that's aged between three to five years. I'm sure many of you have probably had rums of similar age and you will see that this rum stands out as being incredibly smooth for that age. It is a rum that tends to be a little bit fruity. Uh, remember that one of the key techniques that makes Ronda Barilito stand out, it's that maceration process. As the youngest rum, this certainly gets quite a bit of profile from the barrel, but you will also still maintain a lot of, of that essence of the macerates that uh, Luis and his team create here at Ronda Barilito. And it also makes for a very interesting rum when you try it, because as you sip on it, you'll notice that it begins to eat like that, maybe a hint of vanilla, tropical fruits, each palette is different. You will each have your own experience. And I welcome for those of you, if you wish to share a little bit of those experiences in a moment, but you will find that it's also a rum that has a relatively short finish, which makes it perfect for when you will want to create cocktails as this rum will not overtake your mixer, but rather will work very well with it. It's a rum that has a short finish. It's not the most complex of rums. It doesn't attempt to be, it, it knows its place. You have to remember this was a rum that was made uh, around the 1930s. And if you came out of work, you wanted to hang out, you wanted to have fun, came out of work, there was no going back home to watch some Netflix, watch some Disney Plus back then. So uh, you had to go to a bar, you had to go to the town square, you were sitting down with your buddies. Maybe all the things that people in those days in Puerto Rico love to do was sitting at the town square playing dominoes. You were there with your buddies playing dominoes, you were not holding a fancy glass, snifter glass, lifting your pinky and going like, mm, this note has some wonderful notes of vanilla with some slight touches of prunes or plums at the end, right? No, you were having fun. You were engaged in something else. This was a rum that was just moving off to give you that good time while you were dancing or playing dominoes. And it still retains that essence through time. It's a rum that can be had in pretty much any setting. It's incredibly versatile. I'll say that's its greatest strength in that sense. So do we have an open mic or? I yeah, think. we could go. We, I'll, I'll let people, there, I'll let anyone jump in. There was, uh, I'll read some of the comments because people just sort of type them as they get a lot Wonderful. of, uh, there was uh, sweet vanilla up front. Sweet tobacco is a popular, uh, popular comment, like a, like a tobacco vanilla pipe. 
Um, friendly heat in the mouthfeel is great. So uh, anyone else is welcome to, uh, to jump in and uh, give their thoughts. Uh, or I'll call a name, John. Okay, which one? <laughs> which John? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. Well, you, you unmuted first, so there you go. Yeah, that's exactly right. Atkins, it's on you. Go. All right. Well, I, I, got, I have to tell you a little story because I was introduced to Ron, uh, Ron Delibolito when um, Fede uh, Hernandez uh, was doing the rums of Puerto Rico. And, uh, you know, I was, uh, I was front and center. And uh, so I go back a while with uh, this and during that, we'll get into some more of the rums later, but you know, the five stars, like my, that's like my crack. I'm sorry, but it's really, <laughs> it's crazy good. But so that was my story behind it, not knowing it. And then I've gotten to know it. And of course I have all the expressions up to four star in my, my uh, little library here. But uh, yeah, this is, I love this rum. It's really, the two stars great. Three stars, awesome too. They're both just equally good for me. Yeah, and I, I'm glad to hear that feedback. Uh, it's a rum, like I said, uh, two star, three star. All of our rums are wonderful. I like to say there's a rum for every occasion, a rum for every setting, because I guarantee to you, even as much as you may like five star, you come here to Puerto Rico at noon in the middle of summer. You go to the beach. You're not gonna be sitting there at the beach sipping on some five star. You're you're gonna be fine mummified the next day under the sand. Uh, so you'll likely get something very refreshing with two star, three star, and have have some fun. So I like to say there's a rum for every setting and every occasion. Do you have Do you have a favorite cocktail that you like to mix up with the two star? You were mentioning how <laughs> Wait, that's way too many. Um, out of the top of my head, uh, there's one that we make here, which is delicious. It's a very simple recipe. I can give it to you guys if you want to try it. Um, it's an equal mix of Ronda Barrelito dos Estrellas, passion fruit and Caribbean sherry or Jamaican sherry. We call it acerola in Puerto Rico. Those three elements combined in equal parts. It's fantastic. But if you want something refreshing, uh, a lot of you live in Florida, so you also have that nice beach setting. I expect a lot of you probably like to go out and fishing. That's a nice cocktail to have in the boat, believe me. What was that last ingredient, the Jamaican sherry? Jamaican sherry or Caribbean sherry. I'm not familiar with that. Cacerola. Is that similar to Barbados cherry, or also known as? He's, I think he's saying uh, you probably there. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure. Okay. I think he's talking. So about is it is it like it's very thin on the meat and it's a big seed inside? Sorry, is the seed pretty big and there's a little bit of flesh on the outside? Uh, it's 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 a tiny tiny little fruit. It's pretty much like a cherry, a little bit more rugged. Um, hmm. So is it a juice? Not like two or three little seeds. I think what you might be describing yes, is the seed. What you're going to use is the juice itself. You're not going to use the, the fruit directly. Acerola. 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 Put it in the chat if you guys want to grab it. Yeah. Yeah, it's Barbados cherry. Same thing. We grow that in our yard. So that drink's on the list. Yeah, it grows, <laughs> it grows well in Florida. All over the Caribbean. So that's why they, they often call it Caribbean cherry. And how do you serve it? Um, you serve it, it's a shaken cocktail. Uh, you will shake it well. Um, and you can, you will sure serve it on the rocks. You will serve it with ice, okay? You want to maintain it chilled and cool. I'm on it. We're all on it. Jay, I am, I'm, 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 I'm expecting you to source this acerola. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, Puerto Rico is not that far away, so. Yeah, anytime. Also, the, the beauty of this cocktail is that it's very easy to make variations of. So if you cannot find any of those uses, for example, for acerola, you can use anything that, that's sweet, but at the same time, it's a little bit tart, not as tart as something like lime, but let's say uh, um, grapefruit juice, tamarind juice. So you can get creative with this cocktail. All right, passion fruit, little, uh, little ripe white grapefruit juice, which I know a lot of us have on hand when we need it. So yeah, we'll, we'll experiment and get back to you. And that, that cocktail in particular, it's one of our house cocktails. So we make it here. It's not something you're gonna find but in a lot of places, but we call it Mi Vida. Mi Vida uh, literally translates to my life, right? But when using context, it's more like calling somebody my dear, or my darling. So if you have a significant other, there, there you go. Mm -hmm. I like it. Perfect perfect drink for uh, Valentine's Day in two weeks. Yeah, it's right, right around the corner though. So we're ready and set for that. Awesome. 
Now, you guys ready to try something? Let's go look at Oh, yeah. Quite a, oh, jump. yeah. Quite a jump in years here. I like it. Yeah. This is the classic rum del Barrelito. This is the original. This is the first rum that, that Barrelito made. Yes. Yeah. Most people talk to you about rum del Barrelito. More often than not, this is the rum they're talking about because this is the one that started it all. Uh, Don Pedro created it. Um, it was a time where he was experimenting a little bit. You have to remember in Don Pedro's day and age when he was still uh, inheriting the SEA and then he was still studying in France. This is around the 1860s. Even though there were not really pirates by then, so rum still had a little bit of that reputation, you know, being the drink of the underworld, being a drink of, of criminals. Um, Don Pedro really wanted to change that because he knew that rum could be so much more. And to a, a lot of people, it was so much more than that. And he looked, while he was at France, naturally, he looked for a spirit that enjoyed a very elegant reputation, which was cognac. And a lot of the inspirations that, that he took to design this rum came about the cognac industry. In fact, a star ranking system that you can see, that is something that, that descends to us from the cognac industry, even though you don't see it as often in cognacs anymore. They have, a lot of them have opted to use more of the X system. Uh, there may be still some that do. I haven't seen many, uh, but he decided to, to inherit that. And that's a tradition that we have continued to each of our rums give that designation of the different stars based on their age. And Rondel Barrelito three stories are rum aged around six to 10 years. Um, and that makes for a fantastic rum because you have a great balance of that early influence from the Masterate with a little bit more depth that has developed inside the barrel. Rum, certainly, Don Pedro created it to change that, that aspect of, of rum. Remember people when they were drinking rum in his day? That was fresh out of the still, clear rum, and then let's, let's shoot it down. It was harsh. Having something like this was incredible. As Eduardo said, he will meet people. He will greet them in his home sometimes uh, with that little rum out of the barrel. And as he gave them a sample, fresh out of that barrel, people will taste it, and they will go like, oh, Pedro, this cognac, this is great. And he will stop it. No, that's not cognac. It's a rum that I made. And... People were mind blown to the point where, like Eduardo says, you simply don't last for 140 years if you're not doing something wonderful. And a lot of Puerto Ricans are very proud of it. As I stated at the beginning, talk to any bartender, talk to any Puerto Rican about Ron del Barrelito. That will get their face going like a Christmas tree. It will really excite them. And it's a rum that we're certainly very proud of. It's a flavorful rum for those of you who have it. I invite you to uh, I expect many of you already <laughs> got ahead of that. Uh, so if you haven't, get to trying it. And you will see a rum that starts from the get-go as a very, very flavorful rum. A bit complex. You will find quite a variety of flavors there. It's certainly interesting. You will still retain some of those fruitier elements. It's thicker. It's a rum that has a, a heavier body than its predecessor. And you can feel that. You can feel that in, in your palate as it goes down. Very smooth rum too. Six to 10 years, you're not gonna get a lot of that bite. Um, that makes it incredible. And it's certainly a rum where you will start to taste quite a bit of that essence from the barrel in the oak itself. You will find quite a bit of it. It's a rum that retains that versatility of the two star. Maybe a little bit more challenging in certain cocktails because this is not a rum that likes to play second fiddle to no one. This rum does like to uh, stand out a bit in some cocktails. So it's best used, I would say, in cocktails where you want the rum to be the main element. Those of you who like a rum old fashioned, rum Manhattan, down there in Florida, a lot of tiki cocktail lovers, right? You know how tiki cocktails have a lot of spices, a lot of flavor. You want a rum that can put up with that, a rum that won't simply fade in that mix. So this is a rum that will certainly give you what you're looking for in that regard. And as I said, I love it. I always have at least two bottles of this in my liquor cabinet. So I like to hear some of, of what you think about it. Well, while people get brave as they want to jump in, I'll read you the comments because there's a ton. <laughs> Everyone, I mean, 
pretty much everyone loves this. I like the two star, but I love this one. Musty barrel, sherry notes, lots of raisin and plum, vanilla and oak. Uh, longer on the palate, which I was, what well, that would be my comment is that it uh, definitely it's with you a lot, like almost twice as long, I feel like. And uh, some brown sugar, more plum. And uh, we're talking about making uh, fancy Negronis with it. So uh, Bay, I'm on Negroni. Uh, yeah, who wants to uh, jump in? Erin's off mute. I'm going to let yeah. her go. So when um, we actually had the opportunity to test it or taste them all, taste the whole line at one of the run festivals we went to a couple years ago. Yeah. So when I mentioned this to Jason and I was sad because the Facebook algorithm served me the post way too late to get the samples this time. Um, I said to him, I'm like, what kind, which one do you want? And he just went three star. And I'm like, well, the total wine that's like the third furthest total wine from our house has two star and three star. And he just went three star. <laughs> so yeah. That was a no brainer right there. Right? And I was just like, okay. So which actually worked out because they had that at a liquor store I could bike to. So I didn't have to drive to the third total wine from my house. But you're right. It's definitely limited availability because all the liquor stores nearby were like, well, we've had it in the past, but COVID, they're like blaming COVID for not having it anymore. And I'm like, whatever, man, I found it. it, so. it okay. It's a fast mover too. So any, any store that, has, that gets it, it's not bound to have it for very long. Yep. I'm going to call on Twigs. Everyone's now going to cringe. Like, is Jay going to call on me? Twigs <laughs> family. I, I felt like an orange rolled past the bottle. There's like this breath of orange. Orangey, okay. I just, I'm just happy I can smell and taste things this week. Because COVID. Because I just got over <laughs> COVID. So I'm, my, my, my estimation of this is that it's the best rum I've ever had in my life. But that <laughs> might be, you know, a little bit thrown off by the fact that I couldn't smell or taste anything at all last week. Oh, well, I'm glad you're better. I'm glad you're better and that you're here with us tasting the rum. And well, all that means is an opportunity. It means you have to keep drinking it until you make, you make sure that's the case. Guaranteed, guaranteed. So my friend, let's take a look at something even a little bit further this time. Now we're, now, now we're now, going deep into the depths. Now we're getting to uh, some of the more serious players. And with that, we'll give a little intro to our next uh, rum that we'll be trying here, which is Cuatro Estrellas, four stars. <laughs> All right, so they, they say that an image says more than a thousand words, so I'm, I'm not sure I can add much more than that video. That was, it was cool. That was really I'll cool. I'll do my best. I'll do my best. Um, so, Ronda Barrelito Cuatro Estrellas is also known as La Edición de la Hacienda, or the estate rum. It's a rum that's aged between 10 to 20 years. Now, we decided to be a little bit selfish with this rum. As the Edición de la Hacienda, this rum is actually the latest one that, that we created, so our, our most recent creation to date. And it more or less coincided its official launch with the grand opening of our visitor center here in Bayamón, Puerto Rico, which now this next February will be our second anniversary. And we decided to keep this rum just for our guests. So a lot of you, some of you managed to get a sample of it, uh, a lot of you, well, we'll be expecting you right here so you can get your own bottle. Mm -hmm. Now, part of the fun of that is that you get to 
leave a little bit of what is the life of, of a blender here. And because if you get a bottle of this, you'll have the opportunity uh, to fill your own bottle out of a barrel. All right. I was excited. <laughs> <laughs> Road trip. Oh, yes. You go to one of our barrels. Now, you will use what they call a rum thief or a whiskey thief. Some of you may have seen that if you've, if you've been to a bourbon aging warehouse. You have the opportunity to use one of those and you do the old fashioned way. You'll start pulling rum out of the barrel, uh, one thief at a time. It takes about three of them to get it completely full. So you'll do it a couple of times until you go from a completely empty bottle to a bottle like the one you see in your picture complete with the waxing process and everything. So that's something that I look forward to seeing a lot of you here so that you can take your own bottle back home and enjoy it. Now, as a myself, the, the barrel is the barrel itself is already pre-blended with the 10 to yes, 20. Yes, the, the barrel is already the finished product. Um, so it's just pull out of the out of the barrel and fill your own bottles. It's, a, it's already the, the completely finished product as it is. And for our technical folks here, you're completely right, Jay. It's a, it's a, the barrel is, a, it's more for the experience. Yes. Inside of the barrel, we have a stainless steel tank, which holds yes. the blend. So, so it's not an age, yeah. it's like the guy who barrels, oh, who fills their bottle a month later gets a different product. Yes. It's, it's the same product. But the strength is still 43. Yes. Yes, yes. correct. It's an 86 proof rum, 43% strength. That's one of the things that uh, Ron del Barilito, it's very consistent. The process for, for making Ron del Barilito between all of these uh, incredible labels that we have, pretty much the same. Uh, a good comparison is think about looking at an old photo album of your life as since the moment you were a kid on, up until this point. It, as you look through those pictures, looking at the same person in all of them, but that person has certainly changed for about a years. For better or worse, I'll let you decide, but that person has certainly changed. And that's what we have with the rums. It's the same base, it's the same painstaking process to make them. It's a very dedicated team that, that go to great lengths to guarantee that uh, the methods that we use remain consistent with the way Don Pedro started. And so that hasn't changed. We continue to do every single one the same way, just a matter of age. And at 10 to 20 years, this rum certainly shows quite a few interesting and really special flavors. It's without a doubt, a very complex rum from beginning to end. It changes in your palate. What you feel in those first couple of seconds, it's gonna be vastly different from those last couple of flavors that you may experience at the end. Again, every single palate is different, but just a, a few flavors that you may experience just as a, as a bit of a guideline around where you can experience some of that sweetness that feels like molasses or, or even caramel, butterscotch. There are some flavors that a few of you may find at the finish of it, you're certainly gonna get a bit more of those dry flavors, prunes, raisins, uh, white oaky as well. And some of you may even get some nutty notes, nutmeg, hazelnut, perhaps even uh, a syrupy flavor like maple. So it's a rum that's going to be very interesting. And as I said, these are just a few flavors and guidelines. Each experience is going to be very different. And that's what makes it incredible. So that when you guys are now writing in the comments, each of your impressions, some of you will agree. Some of you will get something vastly different. And each one of you is right. That's the beauty of this. As a rum, it does have a very long finish. You're going to be tasting it for a while. Now... Just to say, this is not the rum for that rum and coke of yours. This is a rum that you will probably prefer uh, as an experience all on its own. Um, truth be told, each rum is best enjoyed the way you enjoy it best. Uh, but this is a product that after 10 to 20 years, there's certainly a craftsmanship behind it. And that's part of the experience that we want to enjoy as we get to this uh, tier of rum. Uh, that craftsmanship, that long long time that goes into the bottle, that work, hard work that goes into it. And this is a rum that if you're getting it, the experience is to taste the liquid on its own. So what do you guys think? Let's, let's hear some. Let's I think hear. it's great. I think it's great. I think it's luscious. Uh, I get cola on the front. 
turning into like butterscotch, almost like a Mrs. Werther's, a uh, little butterscotch candy. Yeah. Um, and, and the finish is very bright to me, almost like coriander. Mm -hmm. I enjoy it a lot. Right. I think you're right, you're, you're right on with the cola comment. I didn't get that until you said it, and then it immediately registered in my head. <laughs> that's, that's really good and interesting. I, definitely, there was some comments about maple, which I agree. I get a little bit of maple, too. The butterscotch, this is, um, I'm going to try not to use expletives. This is freaking amazing. <laughs> we, get a certain, we get a certain number. Of right on. Until it can't go on the YouTube. Yeah, Zoom, Zoom has a threshold, right? Uh, are we allowed to say, no? <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I mean, we're dealing with rum here. Gotta get a little bit of that pirate side going. <laughs> I know. I was surprised by the contrast between the nose um, and and how it hit the palate. I found it really light on the nose, uh, almost a, a sweet honey, like a lilac honey that was kind of light mm -hmm. and floral. But then uh, on the palate, you got more of that um, that caramel and that maple um, and and. Uh, and, and some of the sherry in the finish there. It's nice. Oh, yeah. I really like this. Yeah, for me, I found that the the nose is really nice, and then you taste it, and you got the prunes, and then I got more of that oak woody flavor on the finish. Very, like, surprisingly, it became more dry as the finish lingered. And the beauty of this rum, and in all of them really, but this is one where you're going to see quite a bit of it, is that every sip that you take, it's going to be a little bit different. It's not the second sip, the third sip that you take, it's not going to be exactly like the first one. And that's what makes it so very interesting because you're going to keep finding more and more of a rum. This is the gift that keeps on giving because not even in those couple of sips, next time that you have the opportunity to sit down and try it, I guarantee it's going to be a little bit different as well. So it's a rum that you're going to enjoy playing with for quite some time. And we can it's, all not going to be, it's not going to be very much longer. <laughs> <laughs> that, that only means you got to restock. <laughs> you got to go to Puerto Rico. <laughs> yeah. Peter, uh, Peter said that since the it keeps on giving, that means more samples of four star are going to come to <laughs> <laughs> Well, and are y'all welcoming guests right now during COVID, uh, or is this uh, a visit we're going to have to plan for? Yeah, uh, we are. We are uh, be, uh, receiving guests. We have taken steps to uh, take precautions all all throughout our visitor center. We have established hand sanitizer stations. Um, we do have uh, distancing required. Uh, all of our tables or, or all of our points where you have to make lines, which is not really that many. Um, because part of the experience that we want to give our visitors here is that we don't want you to feel like you're in a commercialized tour crammed with about 30 more people. All of our experiences are meant to be very small and intimate so that you have time with your tour guide or your brand specialist to stop them, ask questions, take pictures. Uh, right now for our tastings and our mixology sessions, which are no doubt our most popular tours, um, we have a maximum of six people. That's it. You're not going to be in a large crowd. Um, so we do have distancing. We do require everybody in Puerto Rico's mandatory. There's, there, there's no uh, yes or no. It's it, if you come to Puerto Rico, you will be forced to wear a mask. So uh, that is also enforced here. Uh, so we have taken precautions so that everybody can take their tour safely, uh, but have a good time. So all 630 FRS members can't just show up at the door. <laughs> no, not at once. Not at once. Uh, we'll be willing to accommodate you all a little by little. <laughs> uh, Come in waves. Yes, in waves. Party is a six. <laughs> Maybe we should, you should put everyone in like uh, the big plastic uh, bubbles, you know, like hamster wheels. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll guarantee you, as you're crossing through the Hacienda, you'll have a fun time in that. <laughs> Perfect. So we'll move on here. Before we move past the four star, I'd love to show you all that experience that Edgardo mentioned of filling your own um, your own bottle, which is really unique. We have a little video here which shows it. It's, uh, again, we're really trying to recreate the original experience that these blenders had when they were filling their own bottles. And uh, again, the idea is it's not perfect. You're going to spill a few drops. 
you know, it's, it's, it's the angel share, the ones that you'll have to watch and they're probably more valuable than your tears, but that's all part of it. So here's a, here's a little recap of, of what that experience looks like. So that is our Barrito Four Stars. If you recognize those beautiful hands, that's because the hand model is standing right in front of you. He uh, helped us create that. It's an awesome experience. Obviously, when, whenever appropriate, I'd love to invite all of you to come and, and, and have that uh, opportunity to see it here in Puerto Rico. Just a little something to whet your appetite even further. Exactly. <laughs> so the crown jewel of the portfolio is all that remains. Hopefully all that remains in front of you as well. Let's talk about Perón del Barrilito five stars. And for a little intro, we'll give you what our craftsman, Gil Rodriguez, created to house our five-star product and our bottles, which was all done here in Puerto Rico. So quite an interesting video right there, right? They're all handmade? This. Yes. That's awesome. Right. These, these are all handcrafted by this artisan who we had in Puerto Rico. We figured that for a very unique and handmade product that has spent more decades here in Puerto Rico than uh, the average population here, we had to honor it with a very special product and production of, of this artisan. So uh, these boxes are handmade, They're made here in Puerto Rico, and they are, uh, they are just as equally as special as the five star that they hold. So without further ado, let's talk about it. So I'm thinking Eduardo put it very well. This is a ROM that uh, has bases aged up to 35 years. That's currently, that's, that's older than most of the people in this room right now. Um, so think about it, being in that barrel for that long, developing all those flavors, all those aromas, that really reaches all about a point where it's very tough to simply put it into words. But when you guys visit us, you will see that this rum, when you smell it, that aroma that you're perceiving right now, that's almost exactly like a raging warehouse smells. One of the experiences that you get uh, when you're busy, uh, if you see in the background of, of the image you have right now, uh, you can see all those barrels, in the shelves. You come to see us, you walk among those barrels, you get to touch them, you get to fill them, you get to smell that wonderful aroma that's in there. And that's part of the experience. And in this rum, you really capture that essence very, very well. It's a rum that if I had to describe in one simple word, I will say bold. As soon as you get anywhere near it, this rum doesn't wait for you. It leaps out of your glass and goes like, hey, how are you doing? I'm going to do the little five stars. It really catches you. And it's a rum where you're going to get quite a bit 
in your mouth, it's certainly just as bold. The moment it touches your lips, it's an explosion of flavor. This rum certainly has quite a bit of body. The finish, you're going to be feeling that for quite a few minutes. It's not going to go away anytime soon. And I say that in the best possible ways, it's just a delectable flavor that you wouldn't want to go away. It's a rum that tends to be rather thick, heavy body. Uh, you will start with some of those sweeter elements first, quite a bit of molasses there, uh, quite a bit of that, again, butterscotchy flavor, but it's suddenly taken by an extreme wood flavor. This is a rum that tends to be a little bit drier at the end. So it's, it's funny because it starts very sweet, gets kind of dry towards the end. And you will start to feel a lot more of that essence of the barrel that dominates. Um, in different palates, again, we'll have different experiences. This is a rum that I find to take a very different approach to four stars, uh, which I find is great because it gives you diversity in the portfolio. In my experience, when I have them, I find four star to have a bit of a wider flavor profile, while five star tends to have a bolder approach. Those flavors that it has, they're intense. You're gonna feel them. You're certainly going to feel them. This is, I will say, uh, a product I'm very proud of. It's a product that I'm very excited each time I have it. I look for any excuse to have an opportunity to have, to have a little bit of it. Uh, if you look at your bottle or at the bottle in the image, you're gonna see that it's also mentioned to be or stated to be the first edition of this rum. This is not a rum that we're constantly mass producing. If you have any questions about that later, our master blender will be able to address them very well. It's not a rum that we make here on a monthly basis uh, or every couple of months. It's been a single launch so far. That's why the bottles that you see at the moment clearly stated as the first edition. So that certainly adds a collector value for, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of you who are rum collectors. That's something also to look forward to. Each, each bottle is number, you will have your own unique number. So nobody else will have the same number as you. And each one comes in that hand, beautiful, beautiful handcrafted packaging crafted by the artisan Kilo Rodriguez, which I guarantee once you get this bottle and you put that in your bar, in your home, that's going to be the centerpiece. That's going to be a conversation piece all in itself. And of course, then comes the rum, which makes it even better. So let's hear some thoughts about it. You know, I'll say kind of like the four star, a surprising contrast between the nose and, mm -hmm. and, and the palate. On the nose, it was kind of sweet. I got a little bit of uh, cherry and plum, but then it was, it was surprisingly dry, uh, which I liked. There, so there was mm -hmm. that kind of dry sweetness, but a, but a lot more dry than the four star and, um, and, and a really nice long finish. I think would pair real well with a cigar. Oh, definitely does. Believe me. Joe and Missy said it, uh, but I agree with, with their comment that uh, it doesn't taste overaged. It's a real mm -hmm. um, kudos to the blender and, and how this is, this is produced in such a way that it doesn't feel over-oaked or over-aged. Uh, it feels really well-balanced and still has the age. It still has the complexity. Uh, the, the finish is long, re really superior product. You know, John, I just, John, I just unmuted to say the same thing to agree with Joe and Missy there. It's not an, not over aged, which is nice. It's just a very nice balance. The age definitely makes a statement, but it doesn't, you know, steal the party, doesn't steal the show. And uh, it's really wonderfully balanced and very nice. Well done. So. But I think it's usually with something this old, it just tastes like char and oak and it's neither kind of gross right but this has an explosion of flavor there's so much flavor in this it's incredible yeah, I agree. missy and joe is this your first time trying this it is yes oh we found one Yay! and i think it will certainly not be the last I was just thinking right. that. <laughs> in 2019 this was a double gold winner at the uh, caribbean rum awards uh when they were first coming out so, oh, yes. And just last year, I believe, it, it, correct me if I'm wrong, Eduardo, right? But last oh. year, it still retains its status as champion. That and the four stars as well. Yeah. And the four stars was double gold as well, yes. 
What I think is interesting is that, you know, when you say Puerto Rican rum, a lot of people have got a pre, you know, predisposed, you know, idea of what it's going to taste like, what it is. This totally breaks all those molds, which I think is really great. It mm -hmm. is unique. And I think that's what's what I really love about it. That's why I have a couple of bottles in my <laughs> my library. I'm sorry, but it's it's just it's so good. If I could if you like Missy and Joe are saying it's it's kind of unicorns. It's not easy to find. And when you do find it, it's 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 pricey. But again, you've got to look at what you're getting. And this is one of those unique things that it's just it's this is a rare thing here. And that's I appreciate it. Thank what's you. For the, what's the retail look like on a five star? What I've seen in the marketplace, at least around here, um, you're going to see anything from 899 to I've seen as much as 1300 a bottle. And it's what 750 at the distillery. 750 yeah. here, and and our target for the U.S. is somewhere in that 750 to 800 range. But of course, the uh, everyone everyone puts their their hands in the pockets and uh, it, yeah. it, it climbs its way up past a thousand many times. But like we said, it's a very limited allocation product. What we made in our run was what we made. It's our first and only addition to the state. Uh, up to 35 year old rum, uh, aged rum is not, not something many uh, producers have just laying around. Uh, fortunately for a company that's 140 years old, it was something they had laying around. And, you know, we had the masterful mind of, of Luis Plan who was able to put it to work, make a product uh, that is not very easy to work with into something that's able to be enjoyed um, in a way that you can taste it and say, wow, you know, I, I see the age in this. I'm able to appreciate it. I'm able to enjoy it. And more than anything, it's just something rare. It's not something you'll see every day. It's not something you'll see every decade. It's, it's, a, it's a production that we're really happy to have produced. And uh, as skillful as it is, it's something that we put out there in a way that we want people to really enjoy it, savor it, and collect it. And I, I like that many of you in the comments, you, you mentioned uh, uh, that point that it's not a ROM that, that feels overage because as many of you no doubt know, are aware, working with a ROM of this age is challenging. Um, many of these barrels, if we, you were to try the ROM, as, as, as many people call it a single cast, a single barrel, Try it fresh out of the barrel. It will be very different from what you're having right now. It's not, doesn't taste exactly like that. It's quite different. And that's where- Flour our, and, 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 and carrots. And yeah. And that's where, where they come in. They have the, the difficult task because it's not certainly not easy of taming these bases that each have their own personality. Each barrel has a personality of its own and a mind of its own. And they have to get it to that point of not just having a rum in a bottle to have a number, just have rum in a bottle to say it's 35 years of age. That's very pointless if it doesn't taste great, if it's not a, a fantastic product. Uh, $750 retail value, it's not something that, that's for everybody. If you're putting on that kind of money, it better be well worth it. And... This guy's no their crap. Our master blender has been working with rum for 30 years. You guys are going to meet him very soon. And he really, really knows what he's doing. As you can see, this is a fantastic product. And I love every ounce of it. Great. So we will move on. Those were our products. Um, I wanted to mention here at the end, I know I touched on it earlier on, but we do have one final product here, which is our Ron Hacienda Santa Ana, our overproof, um, 138 proof product that Edgar will also speak about and something that we launched quite recently and in a way that complements the Barrilito portfolio, but doesn't necessarily fall into the Barrilito portfolio. So again, no, no Barrilito name, no stars. But and and a, and a different uh, ABV in a way that makes the product very unique, not only in our in our uh, production, but also in the world of overproof rums and aged rums combined. And Santa Ana is really uh, incredibly interesting brand in this case because, as Eduardo said, it's more of a sibling brand or label in this case. 
uh, we wanted to go in a different direction. Ronda Barrilito, as many of you are aware, is a rum that a lot of people probably prefer as a sipping rum. To a lot of Puerto Ricans, you tell, you tell them, hey, have you ever had a, a rum old-fashioned made with Ronda Barrilito three stars? And they go, no, that's heresy. You don't mix that. So, right, different people will have a different point of view. So we wanted to have uh, something that gives more options as well for those who want to play more in the, in the cocktail area, your mixologies area. And we wanted something that really stood out a bit. And we decided to come with a rum that's incredibly well suited. Again, we go back to the world of tiki cocktails, but you can do so much more with it. Uh, tiki cocktails often call for a high proof rum or an overproof rum. And we didn't want to fall into the pitfall of, oh, let's just put as much alcohol as, as, as we can there and make something that you have it and it feels like you're on fire. We wanted it to taste good too. We wanted it to be relatively smooth for a, an overproof rum. And I don't know if any of you had had the opportunity to try this yet, but if any of you has, I would like to hear some of your impressions in the comments because um, well, this is a rum that once you make that cocktail, piña coladas, sangrias, I guess a wide variety of tiki cocktails, your Mai Tais or Hurricanes, uh, even the dark and stormy. And you're going to find a rum that for being 138 proof, feels incredibly smooth. You don't feel that harsh mule kick that you could find for something uh, in that kind of range of alcohol. You'll find a rum that blends in incredibly well in your cocktail. It gives quite a bit of flavor, especially nice flavors of tropical fruits, ripe banana, uh, coconut. You can find a wide variety of different experiences. So it really adds layers of flavors to the cocktail, not just a high alcohol feeling to it. And this is a rum that you will have a lot of fun experimenting with in your bar. So if you've had it, like I said, I would like to hear some of your impressions or if you had the opportunity to mix with it, I'd like to hear some of your creations with this rum. It, so Darren had the same question as I did. Is it available in Florida? Yes, it is available in Florida. Again, we're working on increasing our distribution right now. We are working with Southern Glazers Wine and Spirits. So in this next year, we're going to be making a much stronger push into getting it into a lot of these retail chains, outlets, and uh, on-premise. So it definitely will be. If it's not in your local location, let us know. We'll, we'll make a request and we'll get it there as soon as possible. Perfect. We'll make it. Awesome. And then my second question was, and if you said this and I missed it, forgive me, I've been drinking. Um, is, this, <laughs> is this also macerated, the same treatment, but a different, and you're just rebranding it or is it a straight rum, no maceration? No, uh, it's, there's no maceration for this. Okay. Um, so it doesn't go exactly as the same process of Rondel Barrelito. As I said, it's a simple, it's a product that we make here, but goes oh. by its own. Did the thousand dollar rum get your attention? What? Who is that? No. Chris is chatting. Um, no, it's, I've been actually looking for an overproof that's easy to get that's to compare to the Jamaican overproof, so. Besides Hamilton, guys, don't yell at me. I know there's others. I'm just... <laughs> so yeah, it will definitely be a fun project for you. Uh, I, like I said, uh, if you cannot find it, write to us, let us know, and we'll make it happen. We'll make it accessible to you. And uh, like I said, yeah, you will. if you're looking for an overproof rum, I am sure, 100% sure you're going to love this. Aaron, I'm, I'm sipping some right now. Um, it It's interesting because... When you first put it in the glass, right of the bottle, it's got very light to no nose. And then after it sits for a while, let it sit for a little while, and then it really opens up. So this, this, and what's really cool about it is it, it's got good flavor. Uh, there's a little heat, but it's not bad. It'll sip even, it'll, this will even sip. Um, I'm thinking a daiquiri. In fact, I'm going to experiment with one right now and see what, it, where, how it works in a daiquiri. I think it's going to be good. Oh yeah. Uh, so, I'm getting, I mean, the, the, the notes, there's definitely no maceration. This is, but this is not like the Jamaican overproofs either. This is not going to be like your Ray and Nephew or uh, uh, Rum Fire, any of those kinds of things. This is going to be a lot more balanced. Um, I was yeah, thinking this, that the other day. I was like, I want a Puerto Rican overproof. That This one, know. this one's unique. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it's, it's good. The way Pajarito is a unique Puerto Rican rum, the Santana falls in that category as well. Again, we're you know we're we're not the standard Puerto Rican rum. We're not the standard overproof rum. We're something very unique, a few added elements, and something we again you guys all get the chance to try someday. What's the uh, price point on this? This one will retail around twenty eight per bottle. So if we what are what? with our products, any other questions on this? I heard someone's yeah. here. Yeah, 28 what? Oh, $28 per bottle. Okay. All right. So we, one more quick uh, sharing that we would like to do before we wrap up uh, and get into some Q&A with our team here. I wanted to share a little bit about our visitor center, which is where we are sitting right now. Um, and like Edgar mentioned, we are open for tours. We opened in February of 2019. So we're about to come across our two year opening mark. It is right on the Hacienda Santa Ana. So we repurposed one of the old uh, storage facilities here after Hurricane Maria in 2017, pretty much knocked it all the way down. We repurposed the wood, made it into the building that you see in the bottom left, a very Hacienda style open uh, building and that is where we right now start our tours that go through the entire property we walk through our entire aging warehouses we see the bottling line we are very transparent with what we do one of the benefits of being a small production facility on a very large production hacienda so you know our tours are very intimate like we mentioned they take our guests through the entire process we see all the uh, steps that we do in our, in our, again, you see the maceration tanks, you smell it, you see these barrels, you walk some, by some barrels that date back to the 1980s, 1970s, 60s that are still filled. Um, and it's a really amazing process. As part of the tour, we have two trade up offerings, which are the tasting tour, which is very similar to what we just went through now, and a mixology class. So we go through three not so traditional cocktails because we want people to really step outside your comfort zone. So for example, the Mi Vida cocktail that Edgardo mentioned is something that we would prepare. We want people to learn, you know, step outside of that, uh, that comfort zone, get out of the box, think outside of the box and, and make some of these unique cocktails that you can take back and make at home with you. And then um, that's pretty much all we have. So let me skip here. We are open for questions. We have myself, Edgardo. We have Luis Planas here as well. So again, we can make this a uh, complete open Q&A. Jay, however you want to manage it. We, uh, we thank you guys for your time and any questions you may have, we're, we're here to answer them. Hey guys, I just want to tell you, thank you very much uh, for sharing your time and your passion tonight and also for sharing your rum. I think it was very generous of you guys to send us four and five star Cuatro estrellas and cinco estrellas, Ron, because that was uh, it was wonderful to try and very generous of you to send, and we're appreciated, appreciative, and grateful for it. So thank you. Thank you. We're glad you had the experience. We're all about sharing. We're all about educating. That's what uh, ultimately the world of spirits is all about, and uh, we're we're happy to share with you guys and. Keep spreading the good word and the gospel that is Barilito in our eyes. What do I have a question? Oh, so, ahead, you, you, guys, you guys are not actually distilling the rum any longer, right? The distillery is no longer functional. I mean, you're just you're blending and aging now only, correct? So that is correct. Where, what is the source of your of the new barreling that you all are doing now? Who's 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 distilling? So that is a great question and one that I normally answer when I don't have our master blender here accompanying us um, to give you the short answer and he'll give you more details. We do not distill anymore. Uh, after prohibition, we stopped distilling. The uh, fabrication was shut down and we started to source. So the family was sourcing the highest quality uh, neutral distilled spirit, uh, rum that they could. And then it would go into the maceration process where we would um, add the macerates, go blending it, marrying it over time. Now we've uh, continued to source from different sources. Uh, Luis can tell you a little bit about that, but again, his quality standards for what we bring in are very high. Uh, he works very closely with those that are distilling our products. And again, with a product like this, 
we have a particular profile that we're looking for. Luis Planas being a, a master blender for many years, um, many decades, I should add, he, he is able to work with these distillers and bring in the product that we had. So Luis, if you want to address that to an extent, I will present you all to Luis Planas, who is here with us. Hi, everybody. Thank you for having me here. Uh, the distillation process, uh, again, we used to have some uh, environmental constraints, so we decided not to distill anymore. Based on that, we do have uh, full control of the fermentation distillation process. We source uh, our, our rum from different distilleries. Depending on the quality, we maintain, maintain an eye on those distilleries. We audit uh, those distilleries every so often just to make sure that they follow the proper fermentation distillation process. And at the end, we receive the, the light product that we are supposed to have. I think that of a meeting, it was funny. Sorry, that was someone off of mute. Can I follow up? Do, you said you source from, is it all Puerto Rican distilleries or are some are external it, to Puerto Rico? It, it all depends. Mostly from Puerto Rican distillery. Okay. Can I uh, have a follow up? I, I wanted to ask about the casks that you're using and that you're aging in. Uh, so are you reusing some of those casks or are you continually purchasing new ones or can you talk more about that? Normally a cask can easily last for 20 to 25 years. It all depends how often you turn over that, that barrel. For example, if you were to use it for uh, 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 five star, it's gonna be just uh, used one time. But if you're gonna use it for three star, since three star is a blend uh, from, from six to 10 years, you can easily use it three or four times. And then it's your job to take that and, and blend uh, the right amounts of those that comes out of the barrels, yeah? Yeah, that's right. It is my job to make sure that what we are getting uh, along the, 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 the aging process evolve uh, as it is supposed to evaluate the barrel and select the barrel at the end to make sure that we have the right characteristic uh, in, the, in the final product. And, and to add to that answer, it just goes to show the complexity of this process that, you know, all of our barrels aren't standard. So, you know, one, one way that I know Edgardo likes to put it is just because two barrels are sitting right next to one another and each age for 10 years uh, and might come from the same original vineyard, whatever it may be, because they are ex Oloroso cherry barrels, that doesn't mean that you're going to get the same product out of them after 10 years. So they're very unique. That's where Luis and his team come into play. They test every single barrel that goes into every single batch. It's not as simple as I need 10 uh, eight-year-old barrels, six seven-year-old barrels, and 20 10-year-old barrels. It's not as simple as that. It's a very elaborate process because every barrel imparts a very unique flavor profile onto a rum, especially when we're dealing with rums that are aged into many times the double-digit uh, age numbers. What's the oldest barrel you have in your inventory or a, it's being aged? Um, what our oldest barrel that we have? Well, the one that, the, the one that we call La Doña, which uh, was, uh, it was filled up in 1952. Uh, wow. It's, yeah, yeah. In other words, very freaking old, like John said. <laughs> yeah. Star release? A six star release with that? <laughs> <laughs> the reality like is that even though it was filled up in, in 1952, we, ha we have to continue refilling the, 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 the barrel due to the evaporation losses. After yeah. a 35 years, you can easily get evaporation losses as high as 70%. So yeah. we have to refill that barrel. So you're not really doing Solera aging then, you're just refilling. No, no, no. Yes. No whatsoever. Yeah. Our blend, blending process has nothing to do with Solera. Right. Yeah. We evaluate each, each barrel uh, and based on the, the uh, again, in terms of the, 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 the right balance of uh, each barrel, we determine whether or not we're going to use it for the blend. Uh, our blend, you can say that, that is, it is a blend of uh, that you are using, let's say, X percentage of uh, product that have been aged for six years and X percentage of product that have been aged for over 10 years. 
it all depends on the quality of each barrel. You can easily vary the blending process as long as at the end you have the right balance and, and, and a consistent product. There's a question in the chat. Do we know that what the what the youngest possible rum is in the five star? We know the oldest is 35. Do we know yeah. the youngest, what's the minimum? Yeah, yeah, yes, 10, 10 years old. 10. Yeah. And if you want, Luis, if you want to explain a little bit about that blend, because obviously if you look at our five stars, you know, age, age statement isn't on the label. It isn't part of any of our rums actually. Um, we're not going for a minimum age statement when we come to these. When we, when we share those with you, like a six to 10 years and our three stars, we obviously respect the minimum, but a lot of times the, the maximum, we go above and beyond just because we're not going for age statement. So Luis says 10 years old, and he can get into the exact details of why it's almost necessary to have a 10-year-old when you're dealing with rums that are above 30 years old. Yeah, definitely. In order for you to make a blend, you are supposed to start with a less complex uh, uh, blending ingredient. And then you start adding up to the, 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 the oldest ingredient in order to make sure that you balance up the blend. So if for some reason uh, you need to add some more aging background, uh, the woodiness, uh, then you have to use a, a, an oldest product. But if at the end, uh, there is no balance and the woodiness comes out and overcomes other aromas, then you have to go back and add a little bit of young, young product. So you can perceive the, 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 the proper balance, balance, which is meaning the sweetness, the, the fruitiness, and the, the, the woodiness. I wanted to ask a little bit about the, the maceration uh, process. He, I think it was Eduardo earlier mentioned that there's vats that when you walk in, you can smell the, the maceration happening. Uh, over what period of time does the maceration happen? Is it a quick process or is it something that takes a while or is it very? No, it, all, it all depends upon the, the dehydrated fruit that you have to, uh, that you have to macerate. But normally, it can easily last the extraction process, I will say six months. Six months? Wow. Yeah. And did I understand you correctly, or Eduardo rather correctly, when he was explaining it, that each vat has an individual ingredient of the macerate? It's not like three or four fruits in one bin, but rather one fruit in each bin or whatever you guys are using, and then you blend it later? No, it's going to be the same blend. What we're putting in barrel is going to have the same percentage of each macerate. No, I understand that. I meant each macerate is an individual flavor, right? Yes, so yes, right? yes, okay. it's, it's individual. And then you Which is why we have almost 30 different macerate tanks uh, to, to house each of these different ingredients. And then how many different ingredients? You get to see. If you visit us here at Hacienda Santa Ana, we'll take you to that room. You get to see those, those maceration tanks. You, 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 like, like Eduardo said, we, we're very transparent about everything we do here. Yeah, so how many different macerate ingredients are there in, amongst the 30 tanks? It's, uh, I would say it's about 12 of them. Okay, interesting. But again, uh, the, the extraction process it depends upon the, again, the temperature. Mm -hmm. How long you're gonna have that extraction process? How much that you're gonna need from 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 that specific extraction? The turnover of the maceration itself. So, but we need, we make sure that before we go into barrel, we have the the blending tank has the the, the exact concentration of macerates. Okay, uh, in order to make sure that what is in the barrel is gonna evolve in the same way. The only thing that could vary, vary is uh, how many times we have used that barrel. But besides that, everything is kind of exactly the same. So you don't really need to account for like differing sugar contents in different fruits or anything like that? No, 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 no. Got it. Well, it, it's a phenomenal product and yeah. All of what I've had has always been very consistent. So that's a, a testament to the process that you all do. 
with that? Well, it's, it's, uh, it's not only me. As a matter of fact, we have here Guillermo, which is the one who makes the blending on daily basis. What's up, Guillermo? Hello, everyone. <laughs> um, I'm, I could, I'm what you would consider as the apprentice. Um, I'll be the future of Varenita. So. Young Padawan. <laughs> exactly, young Padawan. Um, uh, I've been learning under Luis Plans now for about two and a half years. Um, all of the process of maceration to barrel aging, the chemistry of barrel aging and the blending. Um, so I've been involved in all of our new product development from a four star, five star to Santa Ana. So it's been an incredible process and I've had the best teacher to do it. So um, a lot of fun. Also here to answer any questions if you guys have. Guillermo, how did you get into that? Or did you just like, wander into Santa Ana and never left? I, I walked right in and I never turned around. Um, I have a background in chemical engineering. Uh, I studied at Georgia Tech and um, my graduation date aligned perfectly with uh, the search for Barrio's future master blender. So um, a lot of luck involved in the process, but I guess I was in the right place at the right time. What's the uh, biggest surprise you found since starting your job? Probably how much I sweat on a daily basis. <laughs> um, the warehouses here have no temperature control, uh, which is one of the requirements to be named a Puerto Rican rum. We have to leave our warehouses in the ambient climate. Um, so we can't have humidification. We can't have refrigeration. Um, it's under the Puerto Rican sun and our barrels are getting baked equally as much as I am on a a daily basis. So uh, those warehouses can reach temperatures of uh, 95 to 100, 110 degrees um, regularly. And um, that was something that I wasn't expecting when uh, coming into a job here. So when you all are um, blending a batch and, and trying to align flavors for a, a two star or a three star or a five, how old is the batch you're, you're comparing it against? to try to get those flavors aligned? Is it a, you know, a 10 year old sample you're shooting for that, that you're comparing to? Is it a 50 year old? What, what kind of age is that? I, I'm assuming over time you're going from one um, hold back to the next, to the next. Of course, it's a great question. Um, we do keep samples of every batch that we've produced. So we do have reference points throughout our entire time of, of producing. Um, normally, we'll look to the most previous uh, or a few back um, to get all of our uh, our product in alignment. Um, we do use a few methods for measuring our proof, for measuring our color, and then the flavor is mostly up to Luis and I. Um, our palate is the one that has the final say on whether we need to add a product with a little more age or a little more uh, a little younger of a product with some more fruitiness. So. So have you had a blend that you did go out without any amendment yet? I'm working on one right now. Uh, today I started a three star batch <laughs> and uh, hopefully I'll be able to finish it up by tomorrow. And this will be one that uh, I could say I did independently. It's almost like a PhD <laughs> thesis, right? Yeah. <laughs> you can send it to Probably me. more valuable. I'm sorry? Well, I said probably more valuable. <laughs> yeah, I'll keep some. In, I'll keep some in store for you guys when you come and visit. You know, I, 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 I I'm really willing to drink your mistakes, so it'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think Jay was offering for us to do testing, right, Jay? Yeah, yeah. that's what I was saying. If he needs us to, to taste test his first blend, yeah. I mean, uh, Jay we're, we're willing to take a sacrifice. I'll be a you can't spell Florida without R and D, right? There you go. By the way, I, I want to compliment. Nice. I want to compliment all of you guys on. The quality of your English, apps just wonderful, really perfect. You guys, I don't know if that's uh, has come easy for you, but you're doing a great job. Thank you, thank you. I'm sure if you come to Puerto Rico, you'll be pleasantly surprised by the amount of English you can speak with, speak and get by here. Um, so uh, people here are pretty bilingual, I have to say. Um, it's yeah. cool, both languages growing up, so. That's cool. Yeah, we've spent time out over in the, uh, in the islands, Culebra, Culebrita, Vieques, that area, and uh, and we there you'll get a little bit more into the uh, rural area of Puerto Rico. So um, it, they'll struggle a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, I think you guys are doing a great job and we sure appreciate you guys sharing with us tonight and your experience and, and passion. It's, it's really, it's infectious. Always a pleasure to share something that we all love. So somebody asked me in the chat, how was the daiquiri? Um, it's, <laughs> so yeah, I'd recommend using the, uh, the Santa, An the Santa Ana for, uh, oh, the Santa Ana. I would use the Santa Ana for the uh, daiquiri. That's what I just made it. John, you did a Santa Ana daiquiri. We did a three-star daiquiri earlier, uh, earlier in the call. Yep. It was, uh, it was really very nice. Yeah, it works. I use that too. And that in fact, this is the first time I've used the Santa Ana for the, uh, for a daiquiri. And it's, 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 I like it because I like the heat and a lot of my cocktails, I like to trick people. I'll throw in a, a, a dash of uh, Seriano bitters to bring up a little bit of heat, just like when you make spaghetti sauce or anything else, you put a little sugar in there, a little salt. Um, and you don't even need, you don't need to do that with the Santa Ana. You just, it, it just makes a really nice smooth. It, it's good. Very nice. Was, um, that, that's great. That's an amazing uh, analysis there. And that, you know, Luis, Luis can speak to that. That is the exact intention of the Santana. Yeah, it's Absolutely. it's it's not meant to be a uh, just overproof bite and that's it. There's to be that complex element where mm -hmm. it has that other layer. You peel back the onion, and you know yeah. onion's not the right word, but you peel back, and there's a lot of other elements in that flavor. No, yeah. I'd recommend it. I I, I think it'll make a it, it, this will make some really good uh, cocktails. This is awesome. And Definitely. Was, when we were blending on Santa Ana, we were keeping in mind that uh, uh, even though it's a high proof, precisely, it's a high proof to, to, to be able to dilute down when you're making a cocktail, some um, uh, oily essence that you normally put uh, 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 in a cocktail, as well as uh, the, the use, but in a way that you can perceive the different aromas coming from the cocktail it's, itself, but not a uh, without overcoming the, 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 the alcohol coming from the rum. So you can perceive the rum, but the rum itself is, uh, has the purity, has this uh, aging background, but at the same time, doesn't have the cogenetics that you normally get when you have a pot still rum that overcomes other flavor from the cocktail. So, this is a very smooth product that you can easily use for any cocktail. Yeah. This is very well balanced. You, you, you yeah. guys did a great, great job. It, it's, it's super balanced. Yes, it is a two years old uh, product that is selected uh, considering uh, the, the complexity, meaning we, we are trying to remove during the distillation process all the secondary alcohol and be able to come up with just a product that have been evolved as a simple, a simple product during the aging process. I, I would totally do this, even uh, a, a tea punch. I would you know, maybe a cube, a little twist of lemon or lime. Uh, it, it, mm -hmm. it, it can, it's very versatile. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, yeah. John's just trying to make us all very jealous tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can tell it was <laughs> the door is open. You all guys come up here. Why do you think my five star has just, let's see how much left is in there. That's <laughs> all I have left in my, uh, this one, right. this, this bottle. Because Wrong. friends come over here and you know what they want to drink? This one. <laughs> That's why it comes with a case. So you can hide it. No, I don't hide any of my stuff. No. Anybody come up here? <laughs> no, you come in, your family. We were rum people. There you go. I love that. Awesome. I have one last question. I think I know the answer to this, but I want to ask it anyways. Is there a corner of the, the warehouse that you actually still have any uh, barrelitos, little barrels around still? Or is that, uh, that pretty much gone at this point? Yeah, I mean, yeah. you're... You're, you're in the same room as that we have one right here. Every once in a while, we find some. Like we say, we're, we're on a 200-year-old hacienda. So literally, every once in a while, we'll dig up some of these artifacts that who knows how old they are. We keep a lot of them in our visitor center. This is a good example of one right here. That's uh, so cool. There's another three barrels like that. So there's a few. So cute, Missy and Joe said, which is pretty much right. And yes, it is full. Yes. That like awesome. That's awesome. Well, thank you. 
Puerto Rican team. We definitely, <laughs> we definitely are thrilled that you were able to join us. We had a, and provide us these samples. I will echo Travis's thoughts that it was very, and I think everyone will nod their heads and, and agree with me that extremely generous of you to give us these extremely rare rums and share them with us. I know that one of our, uh, one of our inspirations, Kate Perry always says that uh, rum is best shared with friends. And I'm glad that, uh, that all, uh, all 30 something of us were able to, uh, to experience this together. So definitely um, thank you for A, staying up, maybe not past your bedtime, but working late and, uh, and having the opportunity to, uh, to sip with us, answer our questions, share with us. It was, a, it was, a, it was, a, it was a fantastic experience. Yeah, these guys should be honorary members of the Florida Rum Society. Yeah, they are. They, I, I was talking to Eduardo before, um, I, I, you guys probably know, I, I got on a little early to make sure that like the PowerPoint presentations and stuff were all running good. And I was telling Eduardo that uh, I'm gonna invite him into the group so he can see, he can scroll back and see all the posts about uh, yeah. about, <laughs> about as everyone was getting their samples and the excitement, like the, everything. So, um, so honorary members, a hundred percent. And uh, and if any any if any of you are Facebook guys, uh, let me know and I'll get you uh, I'll get you added to our group and you can join the conversation. Well, for sure. Very much appreciated, Jay, and and everyone who participated. We're again excited to uh, partake in these events share our amazing rums with all of you, see you, enjoy it. Uh, that's, that's what we're all about. No, nothing makes us happier. This isn't late for us. This is, uh, this is what we, as you can tell, all of us in this room, we're, we're, we're driven by this. So again, thanks for, for giving us the opportunity. We'd welcome it any other time uh, for, for anyone who didn't get the chance to experience it. And uh, again, thank you for everything. Have a good Cheers. night. Appreciate it. Thank you, Thanks, guys. everyone. Thanks. Gracias a todo. Yeah. Gracias, gracias. Muchísimas gracias. Thanks, guys.